Hey YouTube, uh, just been a while since I made a video and I see that this ridiculous conversation about authorial intent uh, has kind of cropped up and I've watched Integral Maths videos surrounding this and it's a, it's a fascinating um, debate I think because of exactly how wrong Integral Math is, like it's actually quite incredible. Um, and he, here's what I mean, is that all he's done is define the phrase, the correct interpretation, as that which the author says while they're still alive. Um, he hasn't actually provided much of an argument for it, he's just kind of stated this is how we, how to correctly interpret things. But there are problems with that, um, and really deep problems. And first of all, I want to point out that that uh, it's really naive and silly and and not very productive to say something like, "Well, you know, if we don't take into account the author's intent, then every interpretation is as good as any other." That's obviously not the case. Um, it doesn't follow. It's 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 uh, it's. It's a straw man argument. Uh, it doesn't work, you know. I don't have to accept the theory of authorial intent to understand that if I see a red light and I read it as green, that's a bad misreading. <laughs> like, I don't have to accept that for it. But um, let's say that that I entirely concede his point. Let's say that um, that I say the right interpretation, in quotes. Um, is that which, you know, the author intends. Okay, fine. Um, well, we can look back at history, for instance. We can look at, um, let's talk about Karl Marx. Karl Marx's philosophy is based on uh, a reworking of Hegel's philosophy, right? Which implies that there's a certain reading of Hegel's philosophy. Um, and I think that if you look at Marx's reading of Hegel's philosophy, and if you look at everything that we know about Hegel and, and his intent uh, within that philosophy, within his work, I think that you can make a pretty good case that Mark, or Marx excuse me, misread Hegel's intentions in Hegel's philosophy and constructed his whole system out of a misreading. Right. Um, you can say that, uh, and that's all well and good. But to say that that Marx perpetrated the wrong reading of Hegel becomes kind of useless, then, doesn't it? Um, it becomes useless because Marx constructed a whole system off of this misreading. Um, he built a whole philosophy. And if you can point to a thinker who's had more of an impact on the world in a practical sense, I would love to hear it. Maybe Jesus. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's, uh, that's the case. But does that in any way, uh, is, would that work as, as an argument against Marxism? No, of course it wouldn't. Um, and point, merely pointing that out, that Marx was wrong, quote-unquote, in his reading of Hegel, um, maybe, but it's not that interesting. Uh, there's so much of a conversation to have, and that's just not a part of, that com of any interesting conversation you could have about the issue. Um, and mind you, I don't, I don't mean to say that I think that Marx did misread Hegel. Uh, there, there's a good debate about that. Um, and there's a good debate to be had about that. Um, uh, people point out, for instance, that uh, the notion of the virgin birth is, is based on a, a mistranslation, the, translating um, the, the words for for young woman in Hebrew that doesn't have the connotation of virgin into the word for Greek, 
which means young woman, but it has this connotation of virgin, and then that's where the notion of the virgin birth comes from. Um, now, you can point that out, and uh, in the example of, like, I don't know, in the example of whether or not Christianity is true or false in the world, it might have some bearing. But in terms of interpreting Christianity, uh, in terms of providing an interesting interpretation, it doesn't really get you anywhere. Um, it doesn't... It's, it's not... Within the context of, of literary criticism, within the context of literary, literary analysis, uh, it just is neither here mm -hmm. nor there. It, it does not matter. Um, furthermore, uh, I pointed out in the comments section to Integral Math's video um, this, this beautiful book um, called Spurs, Nietzsche's Style uh, by Jacques Derrida. Um, and in this book, in the, in the last 15 pages, he does this incredible thing where he he imagine you know Nietzsche as a philosopher wrote a, a lot of uh, aphorisms right um, a lot of just sort of single sentences that are that are intended to be somewhat profound and and Nietzsche's reasoning for doing this is that as far as as far as where or I wouldn't even say Nietzsche's reasoning I think that why it's effective again independent of Nietzsche's reasoning is uh, that it's so anti-systematic, and if you look at the state of philosophy at that time, uh, there's something really radical about that. Um, but Derrida uh, imagines that Nietzsche leaves behind, among all of his papers, uh, uh, a little scrap that says, I've forgotten my umbrella. Um, and then, you know, the, the point is, like, maybe... Maybe Nietzsche just forgot his umbrella. But maybe we could integrate uh, this brilliant aphorism into Nietzsche's work, you know. And he goes through this crazy um, uh, interpretive thing with this with Nietzsche's umbrella. And it's it's really uh, dazzling to read, right? It's really incredible um uh, and it, it's funny it's playful it's it, you know it's it's intended with a certain amount of irony um but it's also very difficult and very thought-provoking and really intense uh what really mounts to literary criticism um now all of those things like okay derrida provides a really interesting and really original uh uh, perspective on, on Nietzsche's work through this, and I think that that's valuable, and I think it's valuable regardless of whether or not Nietzsche intent what Nietzsche intended. So even if I say that uh, that integral math is correct and and ne what Nietzsche intends is somehow right, um, somehow correct, uh, I don't see how that pointing that out is interesting because I still think that Derrida's potentially incorrect reading of Nietzsche is interesting unto itself. It doesn't, it doesn't require uh, Nietzsche's interpretation to stand or fall. Um, it doesn't, it's, it's just not a point of interest. Um, uh, and I think that this is how thought goes. I, I don't think that there's any reason at all to say, um, to say that the authors and you know Derrida is somehow wrong. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think he's trying to be right. You know, I. I, I think he's trying to provide an original uh, analysis, and that's not a bad thing. Again, like, the, I. I don't see what the issue is here. It's. It's absolutely frustrating um, uh, to talk about. You know. To, to hear people talk about authors' intent in, in this way. Um, so yeah, the summary of the video is pretty much just maybe 
you know, even if we say that integral math is right, even if we say that like the meaning of a text is to, is to be located or can be fixed by the author's intentions, um, even if we say that, it's not that interesting, and it doesn't actually have an impact on literary criticism. Like if I did an analysis of of uh, of one Harry Potter book and completely omitted the rest of the series and made claims that were mutually exclusive with the rest of the series. Um, maybe I'd be wrong, right? Maybe, you know, in this sense, I'd be wrong. Sure. Um, but does that necessarily mean that, that what's come up with there isn't going to be interesting and vibrant and have a life of its own? and uh and be worthwhile in its own right like i don't see what what you're getting at um i also wanted to to mention a just a quick reta retraction uh on my last video um i think even a new video series i think it's called um uh, i made the claim that wittgenstein uh wasn't religious and I was wrong. I just learned this. Um, I know Wittgenstein's work uh, fairly well. He um, and his philosophy like necessarily excludes the existence of God. Uh, but it turns out he was actually quite devout and and recognized that his, simultaneously very devout, devout and all, at the same time realized that his philosophy would exclude the possibility of God. Um, so just want to just want to throw that out there, you know. I don't want to misinform people. Um so yeah, that's all. Hope, you know, hope you guys are great and uh have a good day.